lead us, O oh God. Guide us, O oh God. Help us to find our way. Help us in our weakest hour and lead us through the darkness thy face to see. Oh Lord, if you lead us, we cannot stray. So let us walk with you each day, day, day by day. Lead us, oh God. Lead us. Lead us. Lord, let us walk. Hmm. Each day, each day with thee. Is that your prayer this morning? Do you want God to lead you? You sure about that? Because <laughs> when God leads, we are not in charge. <laughs> and when God leads, we end up places, Wayne, that we never thought we would be in. So I just wonder if that is really your prayer today. Lead us, O oh God. Lead us. Today we continue our sermon series on builders and dreamers and we're continuing to talk about individual builders and dreamers in the biblical text. I love to talk about building and dreaming and so do many of us, but today the rubber hits the road. It's time to stop talking about it and time to start actually doing it. See, building and dreaming is hard work. <laughs> Thinking about building and dreaming, we get to just sit on the sidelines, amen? <laughs> we, we're going to dream and we're going to think about dreaming about things we want to happen in our church and in our community, and that's where many of us get stuck. But builders and dreamers have one thing in common, vision. And vision comes from God. And when building and dreaming and vision all come together, we know that we know that we know that we can't sit on our hands any longer and just wait for somebody else to do it. We can't wait any longer. You see, people are dying around us. People are roaming around us trying to find their way, and we're busy thinking about what we're going to do. If you can't say amen, you can say ouch. It's okay. <laughs> Take out your Bibles this morning, your electronic devices, whatever you have that has a Bible on it, because you're going to need to follow along in this text. We're going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 34, beginning in the first verse. Deuteronomy is kind of in the front of your Bible. It's one of those history books that gives us a foundation for who we are and whose we are. And it tells an everlasting story that begins in Genesis. So from Deuteronomy chapter 34, beginning in the first verse, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, Then Moses... Now, we remember that when a pericope or a text starts with then, it's telling us that something has happened just before that. So hold on a little while. We're going to get to what has just happened before that. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole Land. Gilead, as far as Dan, all Nephitali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the Nigid and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. The Lord said to him, this is the land of which I gave to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. But Moses, I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over into the promised land. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, at the Lord's command, 
He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab opposite Bethpor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Then there was Joshua, son of Nun, who was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and his servants and his entire land. And for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Then in Joshua 1, it continues, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' servant, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now, cross, cross the Jordan, into the promised land. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you are indeed our worthy and our holy God. Lord, we've gathered in this place not to hear a word from Jasmine, but expecting, expecting a word from you, O God. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in us and through us and among us. Do not leave us the same as when we entered this place. Hide this your servant behind that old rugged cross. And let your words speak, O oh God, so that everything that is said and everything that is heard comes straight from you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. So today we're going to explore builders and dreamers through the lens of letting go to build God's way. Many of us like to build things. You know I have a thing for Legos and so does Pastor Jonathan. But I get really, really upset when somebody comes and starts moving my Legos around. Even three-year-olds are not allowed to move Auntie Jazzy's Legos around because Auntie Jazzy has a plan and a vision and she expects the Legos to line up and to grow up in a certain kind of way. How many of us are like that? You remember that leadership book a few years back called Who Moved My Cheese? We get mad when people move our stuff around, don't we? We get mad when people change the plan on us. We get mad when we think we were headed one way, but then we have to take a U-turn or a left turn or a right turn and go a different direction. But what the story of Moses and Joshua teaches us today, these two visionary leaders, these builders and dreamers who really kind of get this thing around God, even they had to let go so that God could move their Legos. We encounter Moses who is one of the most prolific, impactful, and confusing prophets of all time. See, we love the Moses that we can understand, but we don't want to talk about the Moses who killed somebody. 
We don't want to talk about the Moses who was running, escaping from the people because he had murdered somebody. We don't want to talk about the Moses who was born in the wrong place at the wrong time. We don't want to talk about the Moses that isn't bright and shiny and super clean and looks exactly like us. But this is who Moses is. He doesn't get to be Moses the leader without being born in the wrong place at the wrong time to the wrong parents. He doesn't get to be the Moses who transforms faith and lives. He doesn't get to be the Moses without being the murderer. He doesn't get to be the Moses without wandering around in the wilderness. He does not get to be our Moses without some dirty stuff on his resume. He's hesitant. You remember the burning bush? No, I'm good. <laughs> He's hard-headed. No, I saw that burning bush, but I still don't want to do it. <laughs> He's curious. How in the world is that bush burning and not burning up? He's expectant. Okay, I'll go. But what if he's appointed? Moses, I chose you for such a time as this. And he's anointed. Take off your shoes. You are standing on holy ground. Do not be afraid. I will give you whatever you need. Moses, just do what I told you to do, okay? This hesitant, curious, wrong place, wrong time, immigrant, slave, murdering, Moses led the people of God. The Israelites, the chosen ones, he led the people of God on the journey of a lifetime out of bondage, out of backward looking, out of low expectations, out of limited by what they could see, and almost... Just right to the edge, Mary, to the promised land. I don't know about you, but if I'm Moses and I've done all this hard work and I've dealt with all these raven lunatics fussing about every move we make and we've been wandering around in the wilderness for a really long time because they're hard-headed and they won't listen and they, don't, they keep forgetting who the God is that brought them out of slavery, I think I'd be a little mad that I didn't get to take these folks into the promised land. What about you? Can we be honest? Would you be a little disappointed? Would you be a little irritated? Would you be a little upset? But Moses understands because he knows that leadership is a hard job. It's not for everybody. <laughs> Building and dreaming, <laughs> leading the way in vision is not for everybody. For some folks, you just got to get in line and follow and expect that God is leading. But for others, you understand that this is a hard job and you're going to make mistakes. And sometimes you're not going to see the promised land. Leadership requires you to be a jack of all trades. You have to make the hard calls. You have to be okay because somebody is always unhappy with you. You have to always be evaluating, never resting, always asking what if and what's next. You see, excellent leaders don't just have dreams. Martin Luther King had a dream. Do you know that that speech was never supposed to happen? 
Do you know that the night before he'd been at a worship service and Mahalia Jackson had heard him start to talk about a dream and when they stood up on the steps of the National Mall the very next day, he was bombing. I mean bombing big. People were not listening. And all of a sudden, Mahalia shouts from behind him, Martin, tell them about that dream. He said, I have a dream <laughs> that one day, one day my four little children will not have to what? Anybody know? Nobody knows? My four little children will be judged on the content of their character and not on the color of their skin. But see, here's the difference between regular old dreamer and Martin Luther King who becomes a builder is that he starts to work toward the dream. See, this is what happens in churches all around the world. I know it doesn't happen here in Atlanta first, but people have ideas and they expect them to be executed their way, but they don't want to do the work of building toward that idea. If you can't say amen, you can say ouch. The church is where it is today because we have expectations about how things should go, but we don't want to do the work to get it there. Excellent leaders always have a plan. They have a backup plan, and they have a backup to their backup plan. They're way out ahead of the crowd surveying the landscape before the congregation even shows up. And they're often misunderstood because they are so future-oriented that the people who are, are there have their heads stuck in the sand and cannot see the forest for the trees. The Israelites were grumbling, complaining, and passed oriented. You know, if we'd stayed in slavery, we could have had three meals a day. Well, if I go to jail, at least I'll have three hots in a cot. Moses doesn't know what he's talking about. He's got us out here with no food and no water. Why should we follow him? Why should we keep moving? Let's just go back. Friends, I'm here to tell you today that there is no going back. There is no past orientation that gets you anywhere that God wants you to be. There is only forward movement in this season. Excellent leaders require people around them who can cut through the noise and remind them of their future orientation. What does this have to do with builders and dreamers? Dreamers reveal vision, builders implement the vision. Dreamers are the ones who draw up the blueprints, Wayne. <laughs> Dreamers say, hey, if you stood just like this, you could see the 1,800 people who are sitting in that balcony because there are no seats on the floor. See, the dreamers, <laughs> the dreamers are the one who said, you know, we don't have to put up that ugly screen there anymore because if we hang one from right there and maybe right there and make it look like it's been here forever, we could do some different things with technology in this place and we might actually be relevant in this community. Ouch. What, 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 what's she talking about? Dreamers are the ones who say, we don't have to have worship at 11 a.m. And it doesn't have to look exactly the same as it has forever. Dream, built dreamers are the ones who say, who cares if you bring your coffee in the sanctuary? Are you here to worship the Lord? Dreamers are the ones who see people busting through the doors because we're actually meeting the needs of the 
community at 360 Peachtree Street. Do I have any dreamers in here today? Is there anybody in here who has a dream and who's willing to work toward it? Moses took on God's dream. <laughs> and it turned into a vision. <laughs> And it was a vision of freedom and radical hospitality and radical inclusivity. And all of God's people were invited on the journey and there was no turning back. But Moses, <laughs> Moses got caught up in the naysayers, Pastor Jonathan. He, he was the visionary dreamer, but Moses, he, he got caught up in what the naysayers were saying. He got caught up in the, that will never work. He got caught up in the, you know, we used to do it like this. He got caught up in the, you can't put a screen in the sanctuary. He got caught up in the, I can't believe you want to open the doors of the church to the whole community. He got caught up. And it cost him everything. Our beloved prophetic Moses had to die so that the people of God could go into the promised land because he disobeyed God. He disobeyed the word and the vision to keep moving. You know what happens when you get stuck? You die. You know what happens when you disobey God? You die. You know what happens when you can't see the future? You die. You know what happens when it has to be your way or the highway? You die. You know what happens to an organization or a church or a business when it gets stuck on what it wants and not what God wants? It dies. Then Joshua comes along. Actually, Joshua's been along for a real long time. If we took a moment to go through our biblical history, we might see Joshua way back in Exodus. We might see Joshua in, in Numbers Chapter 27, verse 12, and we might see that Joshua has been Moses' assistant for a really long time. Joshua takes the place of Aaron and all of other Moses' people who are around him because they're short-sighted and they cannot see the forest for the trees. The Lord says to Moses, Take Joshua, give him your authority, the authority that comes only from me, and put him in charge because he's wise. He's not scared of those people, and he's going to keep doing what I told you to do when you got distracted. Here's the hard thing about building and dreaming. When it becomes about us, God moves us out of the way. When my dream is about me, when it's about what I want, when it's about putting butts in pews, when it's about making sure that my legacy lives on, when our dreams become so small that we can accomplish them on our own, God moves us out of the way. Because that's not the kind of dream that God gives you. That's not the kind of dream that turns into a vision. God's dreams for us and God's vision for us is far wider, bigger, deeper than we could ever imagine or that we could ever see ourselves accomplishing. God is not as small-minded as we are. So if you can't get out of the way, if you can't let go so that we can build God's way, then this is probably not the church for you. 
Moses is dead. Joshua becomes the reluctant, prophetic, future-oriented builder. Joshua takes Moses' dream. He takes the vision and following the word of God, he brings it to fruition. Mission accomplished. Goal met. Dream realized. You, you, did you hear it? In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, and he said, My servant Moses is dead. That would have been the most life-rocking, altering statement that anyone could have made at that time. Because you remember Moses is the only one who's seen the face of God. God only talks to Moses. What are we going to do now? Has God left us? Has God forsaken us? What are we going to do without Moses? What are we going to do without the one who's calling the shots? What are we going to do without the one who has the hotline to the Holy Ghost? What are we going to do? But God already has a plan. He says, now go. Moses is dead. Get up. Get up. Get, stop mourning. Stop crying. Moses is dead. Get up. 30 days we celebrated Moses' life. 30 days we walked around in sackcloth and ashes. 30 days we weeped and we cried. 30 days we mourned. Now get up! Some places it's not 30 days. Some places it's 30 years, Wayne. 30 years of saying shoulda, woulda, coulda. 30 years of saying we ought to try this and try that. 30 years of saying, you know we have an idea to do this thing and that ye. 30 years of saying, are we dying or not? 30 years of saying, I can't take it anymore. 30 years of watching our friends walk out the door. 30 years of watching people die next to us. 30 years of wandering around in the wilderness. And today, 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 the Lord says it's over. Now get up. Proceed to cross the Jordan. You and all of God's people. He didn't say you the leaders. He didn't say you, the people that look like me, you, the people that talk like me, you, the people that I think I want to take with me. He said, the Lord said to, to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, my servant is dead, get up, cross the Jordan, take everybody, even the people you can't stand, and go into the promised land that I have given to you. Maybe you're not getting it. <laughs> Maybe you're missing the word for us this morning. See, some of y'all have been sitting on the sideline and you know that God gave you a dream to start your own business, but you're busy working for somebody else and you need that good insurance so you're keeping doing that thing that you know that God told you to stop doing 15 years ago. It's over. Get up and go into the promised land. Some of you are still going. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Some of you are still going out with friends and into places that you know God told you to stop going to and to stop hanging out with a long time ago, but you're still doing it. Moses is dead. Give it up. Some of you are still complaining about things that happened 50 years ago. Some of you are still whining about something that happened two weeks ago. Some of you can't see the forest for the trees because it has to be your way or the highway. Moses is dead. Get out the way. 
You have two choices, builder or dreamer. Dreamers help write the vision. Dreamers. <laughs> There's an old gospel song that's based on a text in Habakkuk in the Old Testament that says, Write the vision, make it plain, that they may come and not faint. Though the vision is only for a while, it, <laughs> it can speak and not die. For if the Lord says it, <laughs> you can count on it. It will do just what he says. And then it says, it is so. Yes, it is so. God will do just what he said. Are you a dreamer? Or are you a builder? Do you take the dreams of God's people and the vision that God has placed in the people of God and execute it? Do you bring it to fruition? See, builder's job is to prepare. Prepare for bringing forth the dreams that God has placed in people. You remember God prepared Joshua by bringing him along, showing him the way. Joshua knew the history. He knew how he got to where he was, but he was also future for it. So he could not only prepare, but plan. You don't just jump out there and do stuff. You got to have a plan. Builders prepare, builders plan, builders gather. They, they gather the resources that are needed for the execution of the vision of the dream. They gather people and stuff and other resources, and they gather up the right leaders for such a time as this. See, the old leaders got Moses in the predicament where he was not able to go into the promised land. And I'm not talking about old as in age. I'm talking about old as in thought. Old as in past-oriented. Old as in tradition just for the sake of tradition, not for the sake of transformation. Prepare, plan, gather, execute. Are you a builder or a dreamer? Are you receiving the vision from God? Or are you bringing it forth? There's no place for anybody else. When Moses died, the naysayers had to take a back seat because it was survival at that point. But God did not call us just to survival. God called us to flourish. Don't you remember the prophet Jeremiah? I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you a future with hope. What's the vision that God has given you for your life? You don't know? Lean in. God is speaking all around you. People are saying it to you over and over again, and you're missing it because you are not drawing near to God. What's the vision for this place at 360 Peachtree Street and the people who come together here? Serve God's people with the end goal of community transformation. If you're not here to worship, serve, grow, and engage so that the city of Atlanta might be transformed, then this is not your place anymore. 
Let me tell you, that's hard to say. Because I came here wanting this to be the church for all of God's people. I wanted the First United Methodist Church of Atlanta at 360 Peachtree Street to be the place where everybody could gather, everybody could get in, everybody would belong, everybody would be welcome, that this would be a place of radical hospitality. But as I grow and mature and lean into God, it's still that place, but it's that place for all of God's people who want to serve so that this community might be transformed. Just like the Israelites and like Moses, we've been in the dreaming phase for a long time. And we'll keep dreaming. And it's time to build. Write the vision. Make it plain that they may run and not faint. Though the vision is only for a while, it can speak yes. and not lie. For if the Lord said it, you can count on it. He will do just what he said. Everybody Write has a dream card. Dr. Bob, I'm going to give you this one. Make it plain. Because I got a dream card from you that your pastor would be healed run. and be back in this place. Mission accomplished. It's time for a new dream. Everybody take out those dream cards. And if you don't have one, ushers, gather them up, bring them in. What's the dream that God has put in your heart, in your mind, and in your soul? Write the vision. Make it plain. So we know you where we're headed with God. It. Oh God, help us to be dreamers. Help us to be people who draw near to you and who hear your voice and who see the vision written plainly, oh God. Rise up among us, oh God, builders, builders who plan, builders who prep, builders who gather, builders who execute, oh God. Help us not to be paralyzed anymore. Don't let us mourn what used to be, oh God. But help us to look forward to look forward with excitement and joy and expectation for what is to come. And God, give us a willing and flexible spirit so that we might be strong and courageous and let go of our way so that we can build your way. Now go forth from this place, but not from the presence of God. Go forth knowing that you have a life and are called for such a time as this. Go tell somebody else that they are loved and adored and that they have life because Jesus has come to give life and to give it more abundantly. Go forth expecting, expecting God to move. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.